Okay. So June, let's talk about what are some of the biggest differences between the Japanese porn industry and the American porn industry? Off the top of my head, I can say that the one thing that sticks out to me is that you guys blur out the genitalia for the most part. Yes. Is that true? Mm-hmm. That is true. Yes. So we're so, not, we're allowed to show butt holes, but if you put oh. something in it, like a a uh, finger or a toy, you have to censor it. <laughs> so the outside of the butthole is okay. Oh, 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 actually, you can gape it. So if you have like, I don't know if it's in the same word in English, but there's something called the anal rose. It's the thing that looks like a bud. I hope that's the yes. same. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't do that, but that looks painful. Yeah. But if you if you can show the gaping side, if, it's just if you insert something or put anything in there, you have to put the sensor on it, which is insane to me. That's crazy. Um, so then when yeah. there's actually like, so is there penetration then going on? There is, but there, a lot of the times, uh, say for example, if an actor can't get it up or, um, if an actress is like feeling pain down there, we can get away with, sometimes we can get away with just faking it. And that is something that's done on set. Oh, wow, man. That would have saved me so much time yeah. on set if I could have <laughs> just faked the penetration. <laughs> I'm so oh, good at faking boy. it. I've had terrible <laughs> private experiences. I am really good at faking it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, like, okay. So, it has to be censored once there's penetration. And that is, like, across the board. There's no way that anybody can access non-censored penetration oh. clips or anything like that. Oh, my God, Holly. You ask such a good questions. That's why you're the big boss who makes the big money. So... We can see uncensored stuff online. We don't live in China. And even people in China uh-huh. can access it. I should be careful there. But um, in Japan, it's not blocked. We can see Pornhub. You can log into anyone's OnlyFans. You can log into like Minivids or any of those sites, Fansly. There's uh-huh. no, you just can't produce it and sell it. Or you can't produce and distribute it in Japan. But okay. there are even people in Japan who film uncensored stuff and then just bring it back to their home country where it's legal and upload it. Like they'll use it as a location or a set. Um, but yeah, you just can't, you can't distribute it. That's the law. You can have like a fun, sexy video with your wife or your girlfriend for yourself, but the moment you hit upload, then it's a crime. Okay. So if you are based in Japan, you have a studio in Japan and you upload it from Japan online, that's mm-hmm. where it's illegal. Could you film it in Japan, have a studio just outside the borders, send them the footage and they upload it to like a, a website that's well known in Japan? And would that be a way to get around it? Or is that just it's too a, risky? It's a gray zone. A lot of people, especially with OnlyFans, a lot of Japanese actresses are uploading uncensored stuff on their own content uh, or on their own platform. And their reasoning is, well, it's on a foreign server and I'm not selling it to Japanese people. But Mm -hmm. technically, I I would feel like that's still illegal. Um, It's something that I personally wouldn't want to fuck around and find out. But Mm -hmm. it's not illegal to film in Japan. um, And I would, it's got to be, but if you upload to say your foreign company's site and your base, you have like, a company based in America, it's again a gray zone, but just filming in Japan isn't illegal. Again, if you mm. took it outside of Japan, that's that's when it becomes okay. It's okay, just a really, so- it's something I wouldn't mess around with. There's a site that was called Caribbean.com, I think, and a lot of Japanese like JV actors and actresses appeared on that. That's uncensored. Um, and they got arrested. So I think if you become too big, eventually you will get caught and you will get fined or go to prison. Right. Yeah. I mean, what, like, how insane are the sentences? Do you have any idea? I've only heard, like, monetarily, it was really painful for some actors. Um, Sentencing, I think I only saw, like, two to three years. Mostly it's just a fine. Yeah. Um, And the worst part is, what I heard from an actor friend, is that they release your legal name online. So say you have a stage name and you get arrested, the news will say your legal name. And that's very, very scary for some actresses, especially. Yeah. Yeah. They, they do that here. I mean, for sure. If you end up in the news as a porn star and some, they will 100% put your legal name out there. I mean, honestly, like girls name legal names get leaked online all the fucking time. Um, right. it sucks, but it's not illegal. Yeah. So there's not really a lot you can do about it. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people 
I have found in my experience working like with some mainstream people, like mainstream documentarians covering the adult industry, they seem to not understand like the gravity of what we call really? doxing somebody and putting yeah. their legal name out there. They don't, they don't see that because like, look, I'm Tom Cruise. That's not his real name, right? You can look it up. It's Tom. I forget. He's a long last name. Um, but that's like, whatever. He just changed his name because you know, it sounds better. Tom Cruise sounds better than whatever right. his legal name is. But like, I think there's so much stigma around, you know, adult mm -hmm. performers and there's so many crazy stalkers who like have real issues with porn and, and, you know, threaten violence that, um, you know, releasing somebody's real name and, and so many people in the adult industry don't have the kind of security that Tom Cruise has to protect them. So it can be so dangerous. And I find that people in the mainstream media really don't get that. They don't see it. No, I agree. I agree. I'm so big on privacy when I, I try to share as much about myself that I can with my on or on my platform with my fans. But sometimes I'm sorry, like I don't want to sound mean, but they ask too much and they, they're entitled. They, they say like, oh, uh, like, who do you like? Do you live with anyone? Do you have a boyfriend? And I, and I don't. But like, I don't have to reveal everything. I get naked on camera. Like, isn't that enough? Like, I'm already as naked Never. as I can be. Why do I have to Never. get naked like personally and privately? That's in yeah. insane. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. Um, so I mean, the stigma in the porn industry, I mean, we were, like we were just saying in America is, is huge. Is it, I would imagine it's probably pretty big in Japan. It almost sounds like it might be worse. What do you think? Yeah, this is also real. I'm glad you asked that question because for me, when coming to Japan, the most jarring thing for me was that everyone was so shy and talking about sex or even romance was ta taboo like the japanese guys that i would date if i even tried to kiss them on the cheek or hug them in public they would lose their mind they're like no no no. people are looking people are watching don't so you would think oh maybe they're just not used to like sex in their culture if i go out and walk outside right now there are so many sex stores like where you could just hire a woman and do sexual things with her and they're advertising it they, they're not like there's no question of what kind of store this is. There's this like a little sign on the outside with the rates and everything. Um, there's girls outside on the street passing out flyers to their like cafes or their stores. You know, you're gonna have a good time kind of thing. So it it's out in the open, but no one wants to talk about it and everyone's really uncomfortable about it, but everyone's doing it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Porn, I would say I've, I've never worked in the American industry, but porn actresses here are, I would say they're viewed more a, a little bit better by Japanese people than maybe an American porn star is viewed by regular American people in the sense that we, I have like a lot of female Japanese fans who are not, not just me, but let's say like a Japanese actress who will have a lot of female Japanese fans who do not watch their films at all and don't support that side of their work, but they're so pretty and they, they like them for their aesthetic and their beauty um, and the way that they like hold themselves or present themselves. So I, I just feel like there's less of like a dirty image and it's easier for Japanese people to kind of separate the sex side of this person A's work versus in America. I feel like you're always going to be stigmatized and you're always going to be viewed as this hypersexual thing. And when you try to bring yourself away from that, the American people won't allow you to do it. Whereas I feel like Japanese people are more, a little bit more welcome to it and encourage it. Um, but I could be wrong. That's just, me from the outside looking in. That's interesting. So then are you saying that like somebody who works in, like basically does porn in Japan could possibly more easily transition or yes. do like mainstream films and not necessarily be cast as the stripper? 100%. That happens all the time. And I, that's happened with people that I've worked with and I've seen it them trans do the transition before my very eyes. And it's comforting. Because even now, um, I recently went freelance and I introduced myself as a porn actress or an adult enter entertainer, but that is not the majority of my work anymore. And I, I guess you can kind of gain the fame through porn. And if you're, if you have the skills and the communications and, and you're just kind to other people and you work hard, show up on time, um, other routes will like appear to you and. I feel like it's easier for us in the JV industry to transition to those other non-adult routes um, versus someone in the American industry. I, I actually know a girl in the American industry. We're friends. I won't say her name just because I don't want to out her, but she 
is very famous in America, but every time she tries to transition a little bit, her fans are the ones who complain the most. They're like, no, we don't want to see this. We want to see your pussy. And that just mm-hmm. breaks my heart. That's mm-hmm. she's, She can do both. Like, she's not just a fuck machine for the rest of her life. Why would yeah. you want, if you're a real fan, why would you want that for her anyways? Not yeah. that it's bad, yeah. but not that it's bad to do yeah. porn, but she should be able to do anything she wants. God, that's so true. I mean, I've had a few stars on who have transitioned out of the adult industry. Sasha Gray is a perfect example. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, she hasn't shot porn in a long time. She's a very popular Twitch streamer. She has mm-hmm. a successful YouTube channel. She has done um, mainstream movies and uh, TV. And, you know, yeah, I mean, a lot of times mm-hmm. when I, in the comments, it's like always referring back to, you know, basically being like, she can't do this because she was once this, like she will always be that girl in the gangbang. Like she'll never, you know what I mean? And it's just like, it's sad that you can't just like, let that go. Like let her be, and she's never, and she's, she's not ashamed of her past. She's super grateful for what she has done. Um, it's, it's interesting actually, because there's never really been an incredibly successful crossover here in America. I mean, Mm. people might say Jenna Jameson, but even that I would say no, because Mm. she, the only like mainstream, she did that uh, zombie movie, but she played a stripper, Uh, you know, it's like, they're not letting her move. It's all. And like every time you see a news, yeah. Or a news story about her, it's always like porn star, even like Stormy Daniels. Like it's Mm. always like that tag is always on it. When I think of somebody who I know personally, who's had an incredibly successful crossover career. I think of Sunny Leone in okay. India. Um, she, you know, was a porn star, was very popular and she was on an Indian dating show. Um, I think it was like a big brother of India. And okay. then she, ever since then she skyrocketed, she does tons of mainstream movies. She does like, she's huge. She's one of the most famous people in India and she hasn't done porn I think it's been like a decade or something. And like, and they won't let it go. No, they're fine with it. Like, I think oh, she, wow, I think okay, okay, thank goodness. part, I think part of her allure is the fact that she did porn, but like she's yeah. doing mainstream movies where she's not playing the stripper and everything. That's the problem is here is when you see like a porn star do a mainstream movie, she almost always plays the porn star right, or a stripper or some sex worker in in the movie like she never gets to play anything else but that it's like we can never take them out of that category so um yeah it's interesting that you say that i don't it always blows my mind when i see like comments like you said on for sasha gray and stuff because for me i i meet a lot of japanese celebrities and work not with them but behind the scenes maybe just meet them at parties and i would say not king shaming but they are far more depraved than anyone i have ever met in the porn industry and people are like, you know, their fans are like, wow, so pure, so lovely. Wow, love you. Uh, but this guy like eats poop and he's a freak. <laughs> like, <laughs> But no, we're the bad guys and we can't do any other work because we've had sex on camera. Like everyone is kinky. Everyone's freaky. And yeah. it's it's just we we make a product of it or we sell it and we're, we're open about it. But that, yeah. That's, um, that's what I think it is. I think it's the openness of it. You know what I mean? People are so afraid to be like authentically who they are. And so there's a lot of projection that goes on. I mean, every time I see somebody attack a porn star online, um, or, you know, troll someone, I always think to myself, like, what is, you know what I mean? Like, this is a reflection of some deep seated issues that you have with your own sexuality. It's always that way. 